1967 Baltimore Colts were determined to exorcise the demons that had darkened the two previous years, snake-bitten seasons, ending in bitter disappointment. In 1965, the Green Bay Packers kicked a controversial field goal that denied Baltimore a berth in the NFL championship game. The next season saw Lombardi's Packers victimize the star-crossed Colts again. The million-dollar fumble propelled Green Bay to another NFL title and triumph in Super Bowl I. Twice the Colts had fallen one step short of greatness. Not a decade of decline, a decade of dismay. It was an era of, uh, of one disappointment after another for the Baltimore Colts and the city, and uh, it was almost as if uh, they had to conjure sign against them. The tranquility of the 1967 summer camp was deceiving. Don Shula drove his team hard, but drove himself harder as he worked and lived like a Spartan. They trained in Westminster, Maryland. The heat was well over 100 degrees. He was living up on the second floor of a dormitory that had a slate roof and no air conditioning. I mean, it was almost like being in a hole at Sing Sing. So 1967 would be forged in fire and tempered by revenge. The Baltimore Colts were a season team, led by that man for all seasons, quarterback John Unitas. Johnny U not only won the winnable games, he was the savior of lost causes. The 67 Colts would not be denied. They outscored their opponents by a two-to-one margin and led the NFL in almost every meaningful offensive category. A hard scrabble plugger like running back Tom Matty typified the Colt offense. This was not a collection of fancy Dans or All-Stars, but a pack of sled dogs running on a rutted trail. Pulled by their lead Husky, Unitas, and driven and whipped on by head coach Don Shula. He knew how to come back, and then he knew how to make us come back. He knows how to motivate people individually. He knew exactly what buttons to push on each individual player to get the maximum effort out of them. Rising above ability and raising levels of play were also qualities of the defense. In a revenge game, the defense exploded the myth of Packer invincibility by crushing Bart Starr and producing a crucial victory. Ordell Bracey, Mad Dog Mike Curtis, Don Shinnick, and Dennis Gorbat's number 53 were some of the bricks in this stone wall. But for all their defensive dominance and offensive excellence, the 1967 season boiled down to two games with the Los Angeles Rams. On October 15th, the Rams came to Memorial Stadium with only one loss. The surging Colts were undefeated. The fans unfriendly. The atmosphere uninviting. Victory seemed assured, for Baltimore had both Unitas and history on its side. The Rams had never beaten Baltimore in Baltimore when Johnny Unitas was a quarterback. But on the way to a lopsided triumph, two certain touchdowns vanished in the hands of Colts receivers. While the Colts lost their grip, victory did not slip through the fingers of the Rams Jack Snow. Jack could catch the back half of a football. The ball's going away from you, and you catch the back end of the ball and put it away. I didn't think Jack could get to the ball. Snow's heroic catches helped deadlock the game at 24. This tie would haunt Baltimore like a psychedelic 60s nightmare. For in the last week of the season, the undefeated Colts met the once beaten Rams in a winner-take-all game for the Coastal Division title and the one remaining spot in the playoffs. A heavyweight fight to the finish became a one-round knockout as the Rams pounded the Colts 34-10. With 11 victories, one loss, and two ties, the Baltimore Colts were counted out, while another was carried off as champions. Sam Ball, a good old boy from down Kentucky way, said, 
what happened to us shouldn't have happened to a cur dog. Uh, Shula was distraught. We lost, and, and they went to the playoffs, and we went home. But it was uh, very disturbing knowing that you were still, you know, the second best team in the National Football League, and you didn't even qualify for the playoffs. We were in one of the Los Angeles bars. Uh, we were at a table having a drink after the ball game, and uh, John hated losing just about as bad as anybody I've ever seen. And We were sitting there drowning our sours and beer and one thing or another, and Luella Parsons came walking over to the table. John just sat there, and Luella said, John, I'm Luella Parsons. I've done a long time admire yours, and I'd like the opportunity to meet you. And John didn't bother to get up. He looked up over his head, and he said, Sure, Luella, sit down and have, sit your ass down and have a beer. And at that, she dropped her cane and did about a 9-5 <laughs> out of the restaurant. To me, to me, that was the greatest football team we ever had here. And uh, it was a ball club made up of a whole bunch of different individual guys. But I'll tell you, when they got on the field, they played as a team. But a luckless team, forever relegated to the fine print of NFL history.